You could look up the Dow Jones priced in gold, for example. Mm. And um, if you compare the two charts, mm. you'll see like a very different trend and yes. like your perception of, oh, well, I, the price kept going up and up, but then in gold, the price right. is a little bit more flat. Yeah. And so, part, you know, part of the increase in price is just due to inflation, not yeah. due to the assets value actually appreciating. Drop it. Hey everyone! How are you guys doing? So today we have Steven. Steven is a co-worker, kind of, co-worker of mine. Yep. Yep, and then uh, we met through bowling, right? Yeah, we were bowling together. <laughs> yeah. We're was on the bowling team. <laughs> telling me about her finance channel. So I was, I'm interested in finance. Yeah, so. I invited Steven here. He has just so much experience in both like entrepreneurship and just life in general, like personal finance for young people. And I'm just so, so, so happy to have him here on this channel. Yeah. Do you have anything that you want to share with like I guess young professionals or people who are still in college, like how do they even start? Because personal finance just seem like such a scary topic, like it's hard to talk about. Yeah, um, so the way I started was really just focusing on saving, um, keeping my debt low, mm. and it helped that, you know, I was working very early on, mm. so uh, the goal I set for myself was to get a job my freshman year, mm. and, and so that was kind of the first step you know, working while I was in college. And then I already knew that I wanted to start a business. Um, and so my goal when I was 19 was to have a real estate business when I was 21. And so since I had that goal already in mind, it was like, okay, I know that I'm saving towards this. So that's one thing is like setting goals and prioritizing like mm -hmm. what you want to spend money on. But that also came with a lot of sacrifices, right? Yeah. So, you know, I didn't have Jordans or like, you know, the fanciest clothes or uh, nice things, you know. Yeah. Um, I had a, my mom had given me a car when I was in high school and since the car was paid off, I held on to that car. Everybody was like, you need to get a new car, this is crap, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But, you know, rather than trying to have a nicer car, right. I was like, I have a car that's paid off. That's yeah. one bill that I don't have. Yes. So, um, so being true. like very deliberate and uh, about, you know, being able to make sacrifices mm -hmm. to to save money. I would set, you know, goals in terms of like, I want to save X amount of money. And then one thing that was very useful is mm -hmm. automating it. Oh, so yeah. um, I had like, you know, you have your savings account. And so just putting an auto, automatically having the money taken out, mm -hmm. you could even have it uh, in your check. So you could even have mm -hmm. your check not go to one account, have a portion of it get split off. I do that too. Account. Yeah. yeah. And that was really key in terms of like, um, especially managing, trying to allocate money towards right. different things. Yeah. Cause um, it doesn't even go through your hands. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even go through your hands. Than just living off of, right. you know, uh, the meager. Stuff. Yeah. A couple other tips, something that I learned from attending investment seminars mm -hmm. was um, in real estate, a lot of, if you want to do flipping, right, you oftentimes need like a hard money lender or you need mm -hmm. capital to be able to get the property, do the repairs in anticipation of quickly selling it and getting that money back. Mm -hmm. So you need like this a credit line essentially. Right. And so one strategy for credit cards that I learned and you know this is a double-edged sword so it's like <laughs> you really want to be good about managing credit cards if you're going to do this but mm -hmm. um, every quarter i would call the credit card company and ask them two things one to increase my credit limit yes mm -hmm. and to decrease my interest rate oh and, i didn't know you can do the second one oh, yeah you can ask them <laughs> uh -huh. and it's like sometimes they'll do it and right. sometimes they won't but i started off I don't remember where it started, maybe in the, at that time, maybe 15 to 18 percent, but uh -huh. I was able to get the interest rate on my credit down to 9 percent. Damn! Yeah, which wow. was really good. That's pretty good. And yeah. then, uh, after doing that for, I think it took about four to six years, mm -hmm. I was able to get a $75,000 credit line. Wow. And I started with like a couple hundred dollars. You oh know? my God. And so literally every quarter just yeah. asking, can I extend it? Yeah. Can I extend it? Never hurts it? to ask. Yeah. Also, the benefit of that is if you have a really large credit line, it makes your uh, debt to credit ratio yeah. uh, mm -hmm. really low. Yeah. So, um, or whatever, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it helps your credit score stay high, even if you're floating a balance on your credit card. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the other thing. But I never 
ma I well, when I lost my businesses, I maxed out the credit cards and then <laughs> just didn't pay it, filed bankruptcy and just didn't pay it. But leading up to that, originally I was doing it for real estate, but it really gave me leverage in my other businesses, you know, just to have a flexible spending account, essentially. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I quickly raised my credit score. I yeah. had like a 775 within like a couple of years of graduating. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Take notes. Take notes. <laughs> Is there any way to tell within the first period of time, like the first six months, to tell whether or not this person will turn into like someone who's passive in the business? Well, you know, if you, I believe that, you know, how you do the small things is how you do the big things. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not taking initiative to solve problems on their own, probably that's the biggest uh, thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like when you're an entrepreneur, you, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait for someone to give you direction like hey right. you need to do this or you know you want someone that's gonna like think through the problem on their own and you know find opportunities on their own do right. all these things without you know you even having to say anything or uh -huh. without it even having to be discussed right and so if you find people that are constantly solving problems without you having to say anything you know mm -hmm. you have a winner yeah if you have to like to remind people to do things yeah. or give people guidance, then, you know, they have like a more employee mentality than an right. entrepreneur mindset. I'd yeah. Say. If you're not good at something, find someone who is good at something. Yeah. You know, my, I feel like my skill or, or was more of like operations, mm. figuring out like strategically, how's everything yeah. going to work out yep. and like, who can we partner with that's going to give us more leverage or whatever. Yep. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. I was, I was talking to a friend the other day and we talked about in order to form a successful team, you have to have like at least one of the three qualities. Uh, one is money, another is skill set, and the third is just the work ethics. Just yes. someone who's like willing to put whatever it takes or yeah listen to all your orders basically and so yeah it looks like you have the skill set part yeah yeah definitely i mean those are those are the i totally agree 100 mm. percent well yeah we were talking a little earlier yeah. about i was like part I, I love watching animal planet okay and part mm. of the reason is because animals figure out how to survive without money mm. and you know part of my perspective is that money is uh, a proxy for the natural world mm -hmm. that allows us to have like this artificial lifestyle uh, but it also means that our values are going to be different than in the natural world so in the natural world you know the most valuable things are resources yeah food water shelter mm -hmm. you know etc uh, where um, we live in a world now where the most valuable thing is money mm -hmm. which has no intrinsic value Mm -hmm. And so before my goal was always about, you know, becoming a, a billionaire, or multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. And I used to measure my wealth based on mm -hmm. dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, an interesting exercise that I encourage people to try is to price things in different in other assets. And yeah. it'll kind of like give you a lot of perspective about the difference between price and value. Um, because they're not the same thing, but we're taught that price equals value. So right. because something has a high price tag, we're taught that it has a lot of value. Wait, can you give us an example? Like how, how do you do that exercise? Uh, yeah, so one thing is uh, a chart you could look up is you could look up the Dow Jones priced in gold, for example. Mm. And um, if you compare the two charts, mm. you'll see like a very different trend and yes. like your perception of oh, well, I, the price kept going up and up, but then in gold, the price right. is a little bit more flat. Yeah. And so part of, part of the reason the price is going up is because uh, the dollar is losing part of it, losing its yeah. value. Yes. And so part, you know, part of the increase in price is just due to inflation, not yeah. due to the assets value actually appreciating. Yep. And um, it's just, you know, tr you know, just look at it. I don't know. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Try, you know, try looking at, uh, you know, looking at the world priced in gold, or looking at the world. Um, you could look at the world priced in the cost of like water or something. Mm -hmm. You know, they had bottles of water. Yeah. Um, but it just it just gives you another perspective, and mm -hmm. so I guess getting back back to it, I, I've gotten into prepping. Okay, mm -hmm. and so I think my goal five years from now is building a business around making sure that 
people are able to have a sustainable lifestyle even if they don't have a lot of wealth mm -hmm. or if they're in a place where money becomes less valuable because uh, the dollar, just like any other fiat currency, has a natural life cycle. Mm -hmm. And there's some reason to believe that, you know, in our lifetime, it's possible that the dollar could go into, it could become inflation, more inflationary. I don't want to say hyper, hyperinflationary. Uh -huh. um, or could come to the end of its life cycle. Yeah. And so, um, and that's happened period, you know, in 1971 is when the dollar went off the gold standard or mm -hmm. whatnot. And I mean, technically, the government was like, I mean, I don't want to say bankrupt, but they had, uh, they didn't, weren't, didn't have enough gold to back up the value of the dollar. So they were printing more dollars than they actually had gold. Yeah. And so um, it's a different sort of scenario. Now we have a ton of debt. Um, and so just in terms of being prepared for different economic scenarios, also, it's also good for emergency preparedness if we have a major earthquake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not able to use those dollars, yeah. like a Hurricane Katrina yeah. situation, then just making sure people have like water and food security yeah. and that are keeping in mind like the assets that you need to survive mm -hmm. and viewing those as assets. Yeah. Um, that's that's kind of more of my goal. And yeah. it's like mm -hmm. just being prepared. Yeah, I think I think what you mentioned also earlier is super, super interesting is how a lot of the times people's independence is tied to financial independence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, like, <laughs> remember what I said. Yeah, but I, I was basically saying that a lot of people view having money as being independent because you can go buy all these things. But in a way, it, it's actually making you dependent upon the financial system. Right. So the way I think about it is is actually just like a cat, right? So <laughs> <laughs> this I used to, so I have a cat and the cat initially he would go hunt all of his food because nobody was taking care of him. He was living on his own. So he was independent, right? Yes. He had his own food, found his own water, right? But when I started feeding him, mm -hmm. um he would start gradually hunting less and less mm -hmm. because he came to expect that there's going to be food waiting for him. Mm -hmm. So now, even though, you know, if you view food, the food as money, now the cat is becoming dependent upon someone else, me, providing that food for him. Mm -hmm. And so his skills that he developed in terms of being aware of his environment, knowing the best places to hunt and get all that, mm -hmm. start deteriorating because, yeah. and his, I mean, he's becoming lazier, right? Yeah. Now he doesn't have to run and exercise right. as much. Right. Um, and so, you know, after years and years of becoming dependent, right, what, what happens if there's something that happens to me, Yeah. you know? Now he's not going to be optimally positioned to be independent because he might be like Garfield. He might be some fat cat now <laughs> that can't jump and climb trees or run as right. fast and yeah. doesn't isn't as aware of its environment. Yeah. Um, so I kind of think of it the same way that you know having someone hand you a check, um, you're 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 totally dependent upon that check. What happens mm -hmm. when that check isn't there? Yeah. You know. And mm -hmm. so learning how to be resourceful and how to mm -hmm. create. Um, making sure you have the things you need to survive, mm -hmm. whether a check comes or not, to me yeah. is important. And also just like depending on money yeah. and thinking that, you know, money is what we, we we strive and we chase after. But in the end, like, does that money itself, does money really mean anything? No. Right? Yeah, there's <laughs> no intrinsic value. Mm -hmm. um, and something else to explore, and I, I'm not going to get too deep into, is the mm -hmm. difference between money and currency. Yeah. Uh, because fundamentally, money is supposed to be able to store value, mm -hmm. um, and a currency doesn't. And yeah. so that's, that's, and whatever. So yeah, <laughs> something, <laughs> you know, that's something to explore, understanding yeah. the time value of money and how your purchasing power diminishes over time, mm -hmm. which also means that your, the value of your savings is diminishing over time. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's essentially why a lot of people, when people say be diversified, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes people limit it to like, I'm gonna have a bunch of different stocks. Right, yeah. And I think diversification means you wanna have different classes of assets. Yes. So, you know, um, you know, whether that be real estate, whether that's gold, whether that's, you know, some paper assets such as stocks mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think, I think commodities, you know, like 
bottled water and mm -hmm. being able to store food. I think yeah. I consider those assets because A, it's a hedge against inflation. It's going to be cheaper to buy it now than it is in the future. So if you buy it in bulk now, right, <laughs> go to Costco, <laughs> right now. you'll offset your costs. <laughs> but I mean, that's what airlines do with mm -hmm. oil, right? Yeah. They buy they buy oil ten, five, ten years in advance because mm -hmm. they know it's going to be more expensive in the future. So I kind of look at the things I need to survive the same way. So. If you were to see yourself in college, let's say, mm -hmm. like you, if you could go back in time and see yourself in college, what advice would you give him? <sighs> like you only have like, let's say, you only have one minute to to give all your, like, <laughs> all the all the things condensed, like all the things you've learned condensed in one minute. I would say the A, I would say value time, um, like value every, you know, every moment is precious. And if you're focused and dedicated, you can create a lot in a short amount of time. You, yeah. Um, and two, I would say networking, you know, yes. and people always say networking, but I, I, one of my drawbacks is like, I think I'm like typically more reserved mm. in certain settings. I'll be more outgoing or whatnot, mm -hmm. but Honing in on that, you know, persuasive speaking mm -hmm. and learning how to connect with people, mm -hmm. that's like key because I mean, sales is the key to any business yes. and learning how to be able to work and network or connect with people is like the core of sales. So mm -hmm. I'd say... Just these two. Uh, well, I, <laughs> you know, everything else, I think it, it could work. I think every, mm -hmm. you know, everything else could work itself out. But if you know right. how to like connect and network with people you'll be able to mm -hmm. build partnerships i think a lot of business is around partnerships yes um so building partnerships getting contracts building a team of people and being able to sell your vision i mean mm -hmm. right the rest is just operational stuff mm -hmm. in my opinion yeah. so what are the things that you do to help you i guess network better is it just like practice makes perfect or yeah it's definitely uh I'd say practicing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was beneficial, I was in a, a program, I was an engineering program that forced us to go to career fairs oh. even as freshmen. Yeah, yeah. Even though with wow. the expectation of mm -hmm. like not getting a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you never know. <laughs> yeah. And then we had like these corporate roundtable events and mm -hmm. they, you know, it was basically just throwing you out there and like build a relationship yes. with these people because it turns out, you know, Four years later, would be we'd be interacting with these same recruiters, and so they watched us grow up. Yeah. And they, it turns out they were like headhunting us. You know, uh, a lot of my job offers and scholarships that I got yeah. came from recruiters wow. that have been watching me since a freshman, and I didn't oh, really. That's have, like a special relationship. Well, I, well, I didn't have that. Well, I didn't have that. You know, concept at the uh -huh. time, but um I, it, it makes sense now yeah. you know and yeah. so i don't know i mean go to networking events ne yeah constantly going do to it networking more. events yes mm -hmm. yeah i mean when i was uh kind of really in the game mm -hmm. i was always at networking events i used to use meetup or whatever ah, and i would yeah. go to yeah, tons yeah. of tech events right um especially if you're like trying to get funding oh yeah like you there's um we're out here in silicon beach or you mm -hmm. know, by Santa Monica, yeah, yeah. and so there's tons of tech groups, yeah. and there's tons of investors, mm -hmm. and so you want to be at all of those networking events, and um, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get FaceTime, and, and you know, you want to build, think of it as like you want to build a friendship with these people, <laughs> yeah. so as you want to leverage their knowledge, not mm -hmm. just their money, but also their knowledge and their network, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you could get some key players in your corner, mm -hmm. You know, uh, they're going to give you the ropes. They're going to teach you, you know, they're going to help, you know, a mentor, really. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you find a really good mentor is like by putting yourself out there, being aggressive and being hungry. Very, very powerful message. So I really hope, yeah. I really hope you can find value in this video. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments. And we will see you next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take care.